love and greetings to all of you from Yogada Satsanga Ashrams. Welcome to today's discourse, which is the third in a series of talks on the wisdom of Bhagavad Gita as interpreted by Gurudev Paramahamsa Yogananda Ji in his book, God Talks with Arjuna. In the first talk, we understood the uniqueness of this interpretation. Let us recall the words of encouragement given by Paramahamsa Ji. Each person has to fight his own battle of Kurukshetra. It is a war not only worth winning, but in the divine order of the universe and of the eternal relationship between the soul and God, a war that sooner or later must be won. Meaning thereby, the Kurukshetra war that is going on within us, that will be won by you and by me. It's not a question of whether we will win. It's a question of when. Let it be sooner. Further, Paramahamsa assured, as God talked with Arjuna, so will he talk with you. As he lifted up the spirit and consciousness of Arjuna, so will he uplift you. As he granted Arjuna supreme spiritual vision, so will he confer enlightenment on you. I mean, that is the assurance he has given. Really great assurance. Then we studied the first sloka of the first chapter, which tells us a fundamental truth that life is a series of battles between wisdom and ignorance, soul and body, self-control and temptation, discrimination and the senses. The human body is a veritable battleground of war between wisdom and ignorance. The import of the first sloka, every night a sincere devotee must dispassionately introspect and see how his good tendencies and bad tendencies were on that day. That is the meaning of this verse. Next, second sloka gives us a warning and asks us to be aware of the influence of past bad habits. We find the second verse of the Gita forewarning the spiritual aspirant that King Duryodhana, material desire, will try to arouse man's drona sense habit tendencies to fight against the soul forces of discrimination. The explanation given by Guruji goes like this. The ordinary person knowing nothing about the intoxicating joy that can flow from meditation, unwittingly reconciles himself to sense pleasures because he does not know that there could be so much joy in meditation. He just settles down to sense pleasures like whatever one gets through eyes that is watching TV and other things, he is little bit happy. 
whatever you can get through ears, whatever you can get through tongue, food, is happy, sense pleasures. But when that awakening comes and starts meditating, then the king material desire inside gets alarmed. What? This person now is going towards spirituality. He is trying to enjoy the soul qualities inside. That means that my material desires are going to be ignored. They are going to be starved. So, in alarmingly, he invokes the past habit, Dronacharya. Beware, devotee, that when you start meditation, so many things will be there, so many temptations, all result of past bad habits. When we meditate, rather when we sit for meditation, that time only we get an idea. Oh, I have that unfinished work. Immediately I have to do that. I have to call my friend and finish that job. An interesting serial is going on on the TV. An excellent movie in the neighboring theater. Others are waiting for dinner. Tomorrow I will, I will compensate by a long meditation. Something or other will come to dissuade you from meditating. Know that this is the temptation by past bad habits. And even for those devotees who are beyond these temptations and sit for meditation, they have to again face the influence of past bad habits of restlessness, sleepiness, you know, spiritual indifference, even after sitting for meditation. That is also influence of Maya, past bad habits. So we have to be aware that there are going to be many temptations to prevent us from meditating. But there is hope. Dronacharya was the guru of not only of Kauravas, he was also the guru of Pandavas. Meaning habit could be bad or it could be good. Let us cultivate good habits. That means take advantage of same Dronacharya to help us. In reality, although Dronacharya by force of circumstances fought for Kauravas in heart of hearts, he wanted Pandavas to win. Similarly, although bad habits are there trying to dissuade us, but good habits are there wanting us, wanting us to go God word, to have spiritual progress. I mean that is the essence of second sloka. Then third sloka, it is explained in this verse that when material desire and his army of sense tendencies and their restless thoughts try to reinforce themselves by past material habit in order to dissuade the spiritual aspirant from the practice of meditation, they find that the calm inner light of awakening intuition, well trained in meditation by past spiritual habit, has effectively arrayed the discriminative faculties to give metaphysical resistance. That means, inside there is so much good in each one of us. Now, by nature, every devotee has that inner urge to progress spiritually by sincere sadhana. Like every student would like to study well to have a prosperous career. But unfortunately, the habits of procrastination, laziness and the tendencies to have instant gratification of senses try to 
impede our spiritual progress. And here, the way to overcome is to conquer those bad habits. And the habit so much ingrained here can only be removed completely by that calm inner light of intuitive awakening. When that awakening comes, inner conviction, it throws light, intuitive light. It could see the influence of this habit, where it's going to take us to. And in that light, he, he has that power too to eliminate this habit. Dronacharya was very powerful. He was a very strong warrior. Eventually, he was killed by Drishtadyumna, who stands for calm inner light of intuitive awakening. But how did he come about? He was the offspring of Drupada. Drupada did intense tapas with the intention of having a son to kill Dranacharya he came out of fire. Similarly, we have to generate that calm inner light of intuitive awakening by deep meditation. When we do deep meditation, definitely that inner awakening comes and that will help us to eliminate our bad habits from the roots so that they don't recur. That was about third, third sloka. Now we'll, we will take up fourth, fifth and slokas together. Before we start the explanation, let us listen to the slokas 4, 5 and 6 sung by Swami Vasudevananji. Atra Shura Maheshwasa Bhima Arjun Samayudhi Yuyudhano Viratascha Dupadascha Maharathaha Dhrishtaketuschekitanaha Kashi Rajascha Viryavan Puru jit kunti bhojascha, shavyascha narapungavaha, yudhamannuscha vikranta, uttamajascha vidyavan, shabhadrodrapadeyascha, sarvaeva maharathaha, Atrasura Maheshwasa Bhima Arjuna Samayudhi Yuyudhano Viratascha Drupadascha Maharathaha Hrishta Ketuscha Kitanaha Kashi Rajascha Viryavan Puru jit kunti bhojascha, savyascha narapungavaha, yudha mannuscha vikranta, uttama jascha viryavan, saubhadro drapadeyascha, sarvaeva maharatha. The plain meaning of these four, uh, three slokas, Duryodhana continues, here present are mighty heroes, extraordinary bowmen as skillful in battle as Bhima, Arjuna, veteran warriors, Yudhana, Virata, Drupada, the powerful Drishtaketu, Chekitana, Kashiraja, eminent among men, 
పురుజిత్ కుంతి భోజ శైవ్య ది స్ట్రాంగ్ యుధమన్యు ది వ్యాలియంట్ ఉత్తమ ఔజాస్ అభిమన్యు సన్స్ ఆఫ్ ద్రౌపది అండ్ ఆల్ మహారథీస్ లాడ్స్ ఆఫ్ గ్రేట్ చారియట్స్ రీకాల్ దట్ ఆఫ్టర్ ధృతరాష్ట్ర ఆస్క్డ్ సంజయ్ వాట్ ఈస్ హ్యాపెనింగ్ ఆన్ ది బ్యాటిల్ ఫీల్డ్ సంజయ్ త్రూ హిస్ ఇంట్యూషన్ హీ కుడ్ సీ వాట్ వాస్ హ్యాపెనింగ్ అండ్ హీ వాజ్ నెరేటింగ్ దుర్యోధన హ్యావింగ్ సర్వేడ్ ది ఆర్వీస్ ఆఫ్ పాండవాస్ అప్రోచ్డ్ హిస్ గురు గురుదేవ్ ద్రోణాచార్య and started explaining these are the warriors ready to fight on behalf of pandavas these are the warriors there is an analogy here eventually pandavas won the kurukshetra war we know that it was an just the five pandavas who were able to win the war they needed the support of many allies many people came in their support and fought on their behalf here i am fighting my inner kurukshetra trying to overcome my lower tendencies negative tendencies for this my five pandavas like yama niyama self control pranayam calmness represented by nakul sahadev arjun bhim yudhishthir these five are not adequate to win this battle of inner kurukshetra i also need the support of other qualities like devotion discriminative intelligence spiritual memory all these are also are needed for me like pandavas needed the help of drupada virata kunti bhoja kashi raja like other kings help them similarly i need many qualities other than yama niyama self control pranayam and these are the qualities first duryodhan is recognizing you know identifying oh they are there they are going to fight my material desires and guruji explains in verses 4 5 and 6 king material desire duryodhana informs his preceptor by past habit drona about the spiritual soldiers in the cerebrospinal centers that have lined up in the battle array these metaphysical soldiers which have gathered to support the cause of the five pandavas are the spiritual effects gathered by the devotees practice of yoga let's try to understand these metaphysical soldiers soldiers are there in cerebrospinal centers in the center they are there but they have to be awakened they have to awaken then they become powerful and help our mission of self realization they are there but dormant we have to awaken them by meditation one thing here we should remember a person need not be born with all these divine qualities need not be born not necessarily to be born with these qualities we can gather these qualities acquire these qualities as we go along in our sadhana i mean that is the solace even if i am missing the devotion the faith the spiritual memory it's all right i can gather as i go along that's why guruji says 
these are the spiritual effects gathered by devotees practice of yoga. So, as practice yoga, we can gather these good qualities. One more point. Even if God realization is not our present goal, the aim of life is to avoid pain and attain permanent bliss. No one can deny this. That is a goal everyone is trying to achieve. Avoid pain and suffering and attain permanent bliss. And these qualities which we are going to study are going to help us in achieving this goal of permanent happiness. These good qualities are necessary not only for self-realization, ultimate goal of life, but they are also useful in our day-to-day -day life to have a smooth and purposeful and joyous existence in this world of duality. They help us in many ways. Next, let us see who are these metaphysical soldiers. Duryodhana identifies them as Yudhana. Yudhana is a warrior who fought for Pandavas. He represents in Guruji's interpretation divine devotion, Sraddha. Guruji wrote, divine devotion, Sraddha, fights the forces of irreverent satanic disbelief or doubt, which try to dissuade and discourage the aspirant. And when we have devotion, doubts take, no, they take much lesser importance. Generally speaking, in spiritual life, there are three doubts. One, whether God exists and is finding God the goal of life. That is the first doubt. Second is, will the path I chose lead me to that ultimate goal of self-realization? I mean doubts about the path we are following. Third doubt is me. With all these shortcomings and faults, me, am I qualified for self-realization? Can I ever, with all these things, because I am aware of my defects, shortcomings, I mean, that is third doubt. First is about the existence of God and goal of life. Second is doubting about the path we are following. Is it effective? Third is myself, me, am I qualified? Doubts cannot be quelled by reason alone because reason is clouded under doubt. When there are doubts, you can't logically explain to your mind, no, 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 because reason is clouded under doubt. Then what is required is devotion and faith. Just move on with devotion and faith, move on with your spiritual practices. In time, all these doubts will be blown away. That is where devotion and faith come to our aid in our self-realization. Doubts can be quelled in time with devotion and faith. <clears throat> Meaning that we should not wait till all our doubts are clarified to start practicing meditation and other spiritual exercises. No, no. We, with all the doubts we can start, one by one doubts will get clarified. One more thing, now, sometimes we get answers to the doubts, uh, that means properly they are clarified. Sometimes doubts fade into insignificance, there is no more a doubt. Not that we have the answer, it is of no importance to us, it just, just fades away. So, 
what is required is the divine devotion, faith to proceed on the spiritual path. So, devotion fights the forces of irreverent satanic disbelief or doubt, which try to dissuade and discourage the aspirant. How true it is. Next, another warrior who helped Pandavas, who is going to help us in our spiritual search and daily living is Chekitana. He represents Smriti, spiritual memory. In God Talks with Arjuna, Guruji wrote, spiritual memory stands in readiness to oppose the material delusion that makes man forget God and consider himself a body bound mortal being. Let us try to understand this. If someone asked you, who are you? What is the answer in general? Who are you? Namale answer, I am an engineer. I am a Gujarati, I am a Hindu, I am an Indian. Isn't it true? That is how we, are, we did introduce ourselves. Remember, these are the roles I am playing. That is not my true nature. I get so much attached with the role I am playing and I forget about my goal. Because I do not have that spiritual memory. How are you? Will you ever answer, Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman, I am a spark of divinity. Will you ever answer? Because you do not remember that. Aham Brahma, that is spiritual memory. Aham Brahmasmi, I am a spark of divinity, that we should remember. Then life is not going to be so disappointing. No, I will just give an example. Say, I am an Indian. I mean, there is nothing wrong, it is good, I can be very proud of it. But I get so much identified that I am an Indian and in so much so that if Indian team loses a hockey match against some Australia, some other team, all day long I keep worried, why, why my team lost, why India lost, why India lost. At that point, if you think that I am Brahmasmi, I am Brahman, here are two teams. Team A and Team B exhibiting their skills. Team A won today. Let me enjoy the skills they are exhibiting. But identifying that pains us. Of course, living in this world, we cannot be totally aloof. There is nothing wrong in wanting my team, my Indian team, my, my state team to win. That is fine. But if it loses, maybe a few minutes you feel uncomfortable, few minutes or maybe an hour, you feel still think about it. But all day long to think about why did it happen, why did it happen, there we are making a mistake, like living more like mortal being, identifying with all these things. Remember, if there is spiritual memory, aham brahmasmi, then the pain is not so much. The pain is not so much. So that is required in daily life, that non-attachment, know that in this incarnation, I am so and so. I am in this incarnation, I am playing a, a role here. That is not my goal. Being an engineer is, is not my goal. I, I just play that role. Another king who fought and helped Pandavas, Virata. He re represents Samadhi, ecstasy. Guruji wrote, Samadhi routes the delusion that has made the soul behold through its ego nature, not the one true spirit, but the diverse forms of matter and pairs of opposites. Before the rightful discriminative qualities can regain their kingdom, the devotee must draw those qualities from his experiences in Samadhi meditation. <clears throat> Who was Virata? Virata was king of that 
country where Pandavas took shelter in the 13th year when they were to be they were to be in Agnyatavas. That means in disguise, not to be identified by Kauravas, they were in disguise. In that year, they spent in Virat, Virat kingdom. The, and whose king was Virata? See, that year, they were not only fulfilling the conditions of the game of dice, spending one year in exile, they were also making strategies, planning for the upcoming Kurukshetra war. They were planning also how to go about it. Strategies, they were making alliances. For instance, Arjun's son Abhimanyu was married to Virat's daughter Uttara. Thus, that's how they made that alliance and Virata fought for them. All that was happening in that year, preparation. Similarly, when we meditate, that ecstasy, that joy, that joy gives us so much strength to fight that inner Kurukshetra. Now, it helps us. So, enjoy, enjoy that ecstasy, the result of meditative efforts. The longer you spend in that, in that state, better you are as a warrior to fight the inner Kurukshetra. So, it is necessary, necessary for us to have the help of Virata, meaning it is necessary for us to spend time in that ecstasy after meditation. Another king, Kashi Raja, Guruji wrote, discriminative intelligence, Pragna, represented by Kashi Raja, protects the devotee from the entrapment by the cunning troops of false reasoning. No, man is guided by reason. The reason is not always correct. Sometimes very false, but he thinks that is correct. You know, whereas discriminative intelligence, that pragna, that helps us to be not trapped by this false reasoning of my own mind. Pragna is not the mere intellect of the scholar bound by logic, reason and memory, but an expression of the divine faculty of the supreme knower. I mean our reason is what? Reason is guided by logic, I mean experience, previous experience, but pragna is something beyond, it is the faculty, that intuitive faculty of the supreme knower, that we have to develop, that intuition. Again, meditation is the source to develop that pragna. Another warrior <coughs> who helped Pandavas, Drupada. Drupada we know, we already discussed about him because whose son was Drishtar Dimna, who eventually killed the past habit Dronacharya. <coughs> In God Talks with Arjuna, Paramji wrote, Extreme dispassion, that is Drupada, supports the devotee's fight against the strong army of material attachment that seeks to turn him from his spiritual goal. Dispassion, that means Tivra Samvega, meaning Vairagya. Dispassion, disinterest, you know, Vairagya. Now, in spiritual literature, Vairagya comes quite often. You should have that Vairagya. You should have that dispassion for things of the world. But the real meaning of Vairagya, dispassion is given here by Guruji in this book. Very important to know. Very important to know what does it mean by Vairagya. Guruji wrote, dispassion meaning Vairagya is not a negative disinterest or deprived state of renunciation. I mean, that is the key. 
It's not a deprived state of renunciation. The meaning of the word rather encompasses such an, such an ardent devotion for attaining the spiritual goal, a feeling that stirs the devotee into positive action and mental intensity. That longing for the word is transmuted naturally into a fulfilling desire for God. Now that is the key. It is vairagya, a normal connotation is negative, you know, renunciation, deprived state. But that should come from a positive quality of desire for God. Then only vairagya has meaning. A feeling that stirs the devotee into positive action and mental intensity so that the longing for the world, material things, is transmuted by an intense desire for God, then only it has meaning. It's not the renunciation that matters. It is the desire for God, love for God that matters. Then only this renunciation is meaningful. Now it's something like this. Can we tell God, God, I leave this. I don't want that. I leave that. I need. I don't need that. Give yourself to me. It doesn't work, work that way. Just because you are leaving these things, you are renoun renouncing these things, God doesn't himself to you. Rather, we can even say that, Lord, I cannot live without this. I need this still. I can't leave that. I want that. But Lord, I also want you. That is more important. I also want you is more important. Because in practical life, I can't live this. I can't live without these things. It's my, it's my duty to have th these things. But I also want you. That is more important. I also want you. I want you. That is more important. Now here. I would like to share some advice given by Daya Mataji. She said, if you cannot say that I want you, if you are not, you know, if, if you are not sincere, sincere, if you don't feel like saying, I want you, Lord, you say, I want to want you, Lord. If you cannot say that, you say, I want to want to want you, Lord. Even if that is difficult to start with, you can say, Lord, I want to want to want to want you. That means you start. We may not have that desire for God strongly, but have a desire to have the desire for God. Now ask God, that will give. What is meant by desire for God? Means I want to be a better human being, essentially. I mean, that is desire for God. I want to be a better human being. When I become really a perfect human being, there I am with God. I am that divinity I achieve when I become a perfect human being. So my desire is to become that perfect human being. I want that, I have the desire for God. Let's cultivate that. Then the renunciation we feel, the disinterest in material objects of this world, that has meaning. That has meaning. No, the basis for vairagya should be desire for God. No, in Guruji said, you know, beautiful his quotation about this. The love for God becomes manifest in you, not merely by peace of mind, nor even by burning zeal, but by calm devotional will for perfection. Look at these words. Only an avatar can express that way. Meaning, love for God is not passive. I love for God. That manifests in you as calm, devotional will for perfection. That is real love for God. Whatever you are doing, you would like to do perfectly. That is love for God. 
It's not just an emotion, love for God, desire for God, devotion for God. It's not just an emotion. That manifests eventually, saying that that calm, devotional will for perfection. That is desire for God. No. In second chapter of Gita, Bhagavan Krishna says, Yogaha Karmasu Kausalam, meaning excellence in action is yoga. One of the definitions of yoga is that excellence in action is yoga. Guruji said, Yoga is the art of proper action. Yoga is the art of proper action. That is yoga. You know, yoga has several meanings. To have that union with God, we need to have developed the art of proper action. That calm, devotional will for perfection. Then that desire for God becomes vairagya, dispassion for material things. That will help us in our search for God, self-realization. Next, warrior, Drishta Ketu, Paramahamsa Yogananji wrote in this book, God Talks with Arjuna, Drishta Ketu represents Yama. Between Yama and Niyama, Drishta Ketu is Yama, Sebya is Niyama. The power of mental resistance, Yama, battles the desires to indulge in behavior that is contrary to spiritual law and helps to neutralize the karmic effects of past mistakes. See the depth of meaning, Yama. It battles the desire to indulge in behavior that is contrary to spiritual law and helps to neutralize the karmic effects of past mistakes. And Yama has five principles. Yama means things we should not do. Thou shall not. Abstaining. Abstaining from injury to others. Falsehood. Stealing. Incontinence. And covetousness. These five things we have to avoid. Next warrior is Sabya. Niyama. Guruji wrote, the power of mental adherence, that is Niyama, provides the yogi with an army of positive spiritual self-discipline to defeat the battalions of evil misery producing ways and effects of past bad karma. These are thou shalls, that means the do's, purity of body and mind, contentment in all circumstances, self-discipline, self-study, that is contemplation and devotion to God. I mean, these are the five principles under Nema. We need to follow. Yama, Nema, do's and don'ts. Yama, Nema are the foundation on which the yogi begins to build his spiritual life. They harmonize body and mind with the divine laws of creation producing an inner and outer well-being. Now, we all know this, yam and yama and yama, do's and don'ts. And they are there in other religions too, not only in Hinduism, Patanjali, Yoga Sutras, it is everywhere. In Christianity, we have 10 commandments. Same thing, moral principles, do's and don'ts are given in 10 commandments. And in Buddhism, the noble eightfold path of Buddha, the noble eightfold path. These are all same, different names. And that every religion has. Now, when we hear these words, yama, niyama, do's and don'ts, the commandments, the ten commandments, these words sound harsh. 
They isn't it true? No one wants to be commanded. No one wants to be imposed. You have to do this. You cannot do this. But see, this is ego. The ego thinks that these prin principles are given to me to curtail my freedom. That's not true. The truth is, our ancient rishis, saints, out of deep sympathy for you and for me, they have given this code of conduct so that we live a life free from suffering and fear and a life of joy. So these are required not only for God realization, these are required even for my daily living here, right now, here. If I follow this, I have a more joyous life. And eventually, of course, that's going to lead to self-realization. If any time you feel this is too much, this is cuttling my freedom, means that's coming from ego, under the influence of maya, delusion. The code of conduct given to us out of sympathy by our ancient saints, rishis. Swami Chidananji, our president, gave a beautiful talk on this topic of Yama Nima way back in 2012 or 2011. You know, he has, he pointed at something which I will like share with you. He said, listen to this Yama Niyama, which have come from Yoga Sutras from higher ages, not this materialistic age, higher ages. Yama Niyamas have come from higher ages. Listen to them and Try to find out what is your soul response. When soul listens to that, ahimsa, non-injury to others, soul will feel, yes, that is what I want to be. That's my nature. I don't want to hurt anyone. The whole soul response, contentment under all circumstances, santosh. When soul hears that, yes. That is what I want to be. Soul can relate to that. But it is the mind under the influence of Maya. It says that these are all restrictive. They are cuttling my freedom. Yama Niyama. Remember that they are needed for our happy living here and today. Not only for self-realization. And now, ego keeps saying, you know, stay away from Yamanima. You don't have to follow, but meditate. Meditation is okay, but Yamanima is not so important. It doesn't work that way. Meditation has to be compatible you know, with the life we are leading. But of course, it's not that we have to perfect our Yamanima before we start meditating. No, it's not that way. Wherever we are, we can start meditating, but have an eye on your behavior in following Yama Niyama. It's not that we perfect Yama Niyama before going to the next step. No. Next, warrior Kunti Boja. Guruji describes, Kunti Boja represents asana. Right posture provides the physical and mental pacification necessary to fight the body-bound tendencies toward laziness, restlessness, and flesh attachment. So Kunti Boja was the king who adopted Kunti, mother of Pandavas. She was adopted by Kunti Boja. That's why she got that name Kunti. As Kunti Boja adopted and reared Kunti, so does Asana support the ability to invoke divine life energy in preparation for the practice of Pranayama. 
because asan is important for effective practice of pranayam techniques meditation so it's an important warrior in our search for god asan proper posture is an important warrior in our path yoga da path asana is not very complicated we have only two things that are important spine has to be straight and gaze upwards here the point between the two eyebrows kutastha center we have to focus here and spine has to be straight because so much is happening in the spine when you are practicing meditation like life force going up and down so spine has to be straight not hunch back and gaze should be always up when gaze is on level it is jagrata avast wakeful state thoughts dominate if i balls come down that is subconscious state we go to sleep if i stay up that is super conscious state spiritual consciousness so throughout our meditation we have to make every effort to keep the gaze up preferably focused here so these are the only two points gaze upwards spine straight whether you sit on the floor or on a chair it doesn't matter that is our kunti bhoja asan patanjali says asan should be steady and pleasant so it doesn't cause any discomfort to us but steady no movements patanjali next warrior yudhamanyu he represents pranayam yudhamanyu is pranayam obviously is a is a very important warrior we need in our spiritual life guruji writes life force control pranayama is the invaluable warrior in the pandava army that disarms and renders powerless the sense army of the blind mind see mind is blind represented by dhritarashtra dhritarashtra was born blind throughout his life he had to depend on others for information similarly my mind is blind in the sense that mind cannot see or hear it is it is senses that gather information pass on to the mind i spring some information and mind being blind it depends on the eyes for information ears for the information if ears bring some wrong information by mistake mind in, interprets the same way it takes it for granted so mind is blind depending on senses pranayama helps to free the soul from this influence of blind mind how see prana life force that enters the body through medulla it goes down the spine it flows down the spine and at each chakra in the spine it goes outwards to senses and other body parts it take every chakra it goes and energizes the body parts so the flow of life force is downwards and outwards downwards around the spine outward from each chakra to body parts in the process life force goes and energizes the senses eyes ears skin tongue nose all the senses are energized by the life force that is coming down and flowing out and these senses are active now they are fed by life force and when active they bring information and pass on to mind so mind is always a dependent on the senses rather influenced by the senses whatever mind want uh, senses want it obeys pranayama is prana yama prana means life force yama means control control of life force means we reverse this flow of life force inward and upward 
from senses we draw the life force into the spine chakras and in the spine they go up towards sahasrara inward and upward reversing the direction when the life force is removed from the senses the senses are subdued like in sleep i don't listen in sleep because life force is removed from my ears similarly eyes ears nose etc during pranayama by doing pranayama we draw this life force from the senses making them inactive when they are inactive mind is not under the influence of the senses blind mind is not under the influence of the senses so that's what we want mind has to be under the influence of the soul not on the senses that is done by pranayama represented by yudhamanyu next warrior is purujit purujit represents pratyahara interiorization or stillness guruji writes mental interiorization pratyahara provides the yogi with that steadiness of mental calm that prevents the prenatal habits of the sense army from causing sudden scattering of the mind and the material world it's not very difficult to understand see when the life force is withdrawn from the senses senses are subdued and mind is free from the influences then there is interiorization you go inside other senses keep us in touch with outside world senses outside world but when they are cut off, we are inside like in sleep sleep i don't see i don't hear i don't taste but unfortunately mind is not in my control it's subconscious state but in meditation senses do not function like in sleep to a certain extent at the same time mind is active consciousness is alive and that is interiorized state known as pratyahara interiorization stillness i mean one should remember the goal of any meditation is pratyahara not pranayama as some people think goal of meditation is not pranayama the goal of meditation is pratyahara that interiorization when we interiorized you are in that wondrous inner world not thoughts no thoughts inside no feelings no sensations no dependence on any information that normally comes through the senses it is inside who are you inside that divinity so it is so important to get used to that interiorization that can only be achieved through pranayama by practicing pranayama senses are subdued and interiorization is felt stillness here i would say that interiorization pratyahara is both an effort and a result interiorization is a result in the sense when we practice pranayama the result is pratyahara interiorization that's true but always it doesn't happen when you practice pranayama for some time and you may not necessarily get that interiorization stillness there you have to put in a little more effort that means don't leave don't leave the meditation thinking that today my mind is still agitated restlessness is there maybe i don't have that stillness today i don't have interiorization don't think that way pranayama is over pranayama means what practice of hangsa technique om technique kriya technique all these things are pranayama procedures you finish that even if is uh, restlessness is there sit there sit there i, I sit definitely because i allot so much time for interiorization stillness practice of stillness i sit there if mind is restless look at kutasa visualize your ishta daiva bhagwan krishna or guruji or someone visualize 
and if you required you say om guru om guru krishna 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 mentally chant after 3 4 5 minutes then comes that stillness definitely it comes although it wasn't there that means i made further effort to get that remember that the goal of your meditation is stillness pratyahara purujit otherwise you are not taking advantage of warrior purujit just leave and what happens here in stillness one of the most captivating and pleasant benefit for me is experience experiencing that inner joy otherwise inner joy is only theory it's just we keep hearing what is inner joy but if you have that stillness it's no more a word a phrase inner joy it is experience that's why i often say that the characteristic the chief characteristic of a yoga devotee is experience he experiences yoga devotee after practicing that inner joy for that you have to cultivate that pandava warrior purujit you have to practice stillness pratyahara and here there are all our doubts are clarified you know about god existence of god nature of god all these things you you yourself feel that not through intellect but by experience that is the importance of stillness now guruji said when bliss comes over you you recognize that as a conscious intelligent universal being to whom you may appeal and not as an abstract mental concept mark his words when the joy comes in stillness after meditation that joy is not simple joy when we see i i i feel joyful when i eat some nice food or meet a person it's not that kind of joy here when that joy comes in stillness you recognize that joy as a conscious intelligent universal being to whom you may appeal meaning that that joy comes with a sense of higher presence it's not just joy the joy comes with the conviction of the existence of a higher being higher principle i mean that is that that is the goal of meditation that you should always aim remember that aim that never leave your meditation without spending some time in stillness pratyahara next warrior is abhimanyu we know abhimanyu was the offspring of arjun and subhadra he represents self mastery samyama in sanskrit samyam self mastery self mastery son of self control arjun stands for self control guruji wrote self mastery is that great pandava warrior whose victories enable the yogi to hold back the onslaught of the restless delusive consciousness of ego senses and habits and thus to remain longer and longer in the state of divine soul consciousness both during and after meditation see during meditation feeling joy is something that effect of meditation you know at the end of meditation you feel but if we have that self mastery we enjoy the benefit of meditation for longer and longer durations even after meditation meaning we take that benefits of meditation into our daily activities through the help of abhimanyu that is self mastery he represents dharan dhyan samadhi three aspects he represents guruji wrote the five steps are the preliminaries of yoga what are the five steps as we saw yama niyama asana pranayama pratyahara 
They are the preliminaries of yoga. Samyama consists of the occult trio dharana, dhyana, samadhi, concentration, meditation, and divine union, and is yoga proper. When mind is withdrawn from the sensory disturbances, the, then dharana and dhyana in conjunction produce the varying stages of samadhi, ecstatic realization, and finally divine union. Here, let us understand what are these words, dharana, dhyana, samadhi. After pranayama and pratyahara comes dharana. Dharana literally uh, means concentration. Initially, I was wondering what is concentration after pranayama, after pratyahara, pratyahara, there is a degree of concentration already. But again, what is concentration and then dhyana and samadhi? It is like this. If this is yogic concentration. Normally, concentration means what? In, in the normal common, uh, common parlance, concentration means take an object and study various characteristics of that object. Keep on studying. Then that is you are concentrating on that object. That is fine. In yogic concentration, you become one with that object and then understand about that object. You become one with that object. That is dharana, yogic concentration. One with that object. When you become one with that object, there is nothing like studying. You are just, you are absorbing. You are one with that. You know everything about that object. No, no need to concentrate. You are that dharana. That is what happens when you are practicing, say, a womb technique. We concentrate on that, on, on that cosmic sound, womb. It is not just listening to warm, we try to become one with that sound. That is dharana, one with, one with that sound, dharana, at the highest concentration. And warm is one aspect of God, sound vibration. God has various aspects, many manifestations. God is light, God is love, God is joy, God is wisdom, all these things. It could be just the joy. One with that joy inside, that is dharana. One with that light inside, dharana. One with that you know, sound, wisdom, anything. And when you are enjoying that, one with that sound inside or that joy inside, that is dharana. Afterwards, further sadhana, if you are able to feel that oneness with that cosmic sound, even outside the body, or that, that joy even outside the body, one with that joy even outside the body, that becomes dhyan, meditation. And further expansion is union with the divine light, divine joy, samadhi. These are the stages. Dharana, micro, jhana, macro, and further samadhi. First inside, and then even outside, and then goes beyond. Dharana, Dhyana, and Samadhi. These three are represented by Abhimanyu. Then another, uh, another set of warriors mentioned by Duryodhan are Draupadeya. Draupadeya literally means sons of Draupadi. Guruji wrote, the manifestations Characteristic of each of the five awakened spinal centers, such as the specific forms, lights, or sounds, characteristic of each center upon which the yogi concentrates to draw divine discrimination, divine discriminative power to fight the sense mind and its offspring. Easy to understand like this. Draupadi represents Kundalini. When Kundalini rises up the spine, at each center, we have one of the Pandavas, no? Sahadev, then Nakul, and then Arjun at Manipura, like that. Bhim at uh, Anahata, like that. Five Pandavas. When Kundalini moves up, at each center, it produces an offspring. And this offspring has some characteristics of sound, type of sound, and light colors of light. 
So, Mooladhara produces a particular type of sound and particular type of light colors. Similarly, Swadhisthana, Manipura, each chakra has and these manifestations of lights and sounds, they are represented by sons of Draupadi because as Kundalini rises, these become manifest. So, these are the, the list of warriors that fought for Pandavas, these are the characteristic spiritual soldiers we have to cultivate to in order to attain self-realization, in order to live a life free from pain and suffering and in that perpetual joy, we have to have these qualities. Now, you must have observed that although we started studying Bhagavad Gita, in the process, we have found, we found correlation with Patanjali Yoga Sutras. Now, we have seen the need for yam niyam asan, pranayam pratyahar, dharan dhyan samadhi. What are these? Patanjali Ashtanga Mark, the eight steps of Patanjali Ashtanga Mark. So, there is perfect correlation. There is no contra contradiction. Patanjali Ashtanga Mark described here in Bhagavad Gita. One more thing I would like to mention. This is not there, it is not here only in Hinduism or Yoga Sutras. Yoga is so universal. That is the real esoteric essence of all great religions of the world. Esoteric that implied that the kernel of each, each religion is that yoga, union with God. It, although it appears that we are talking about Hindu, Hinduism or Patanjali Yoga Sutras familiar here in India, no, everywhere it is there. For instance, Saint Teresa of Avila, Saint Teresa, she wrote about the different stages of prayer. She used the word prayer. She did not use the word yoga. Different stages of prayer like oral prayer, mental prayer, prayer of recollection, prayer of quiet, prayer of communion, prayer of union. This is yoga in Christian terminology. This is yoga in Christian terminology. Look at the faces, oral prayer, mental prayer, prayer of recollection, prayer of quiet, prayer of communion, prayer of union. It's going there, same thing, dharana, dhyana, samadhi, union. A description of successive stages of pratyahara, interiorization. In the inner stillness, there comes the awareness of God with oneself, prayer of communion. And then the uniting of one's consciousness with God, prayer of union. Now, the very words after listening to the uh, I mean, the, listening to the words like pratyahara, dharana, dhyana, samadhi, these the words also make sense. Oral prayer, mental prayer, prayer of recollection, prayer of quiet, prayer of communion, prayer of union, same thing. I mean, it is universal. Words may be different. Terminology is different, but principles are same. That is the thing. Now, just one point before I complete today about Abhimanyu. These are the, the characters, Pandava warriors we studied. But there is one question, you know, many people have, why Abhimanyu was killed? Abhimanyu is a very sweet, sweet devotee, sweet warrior. And he was a great, great warrior having so many skills, sweet, but he also had to go. How? Why, it, why did it happen? Here is some explanation. On that fateful day, Dronacharya, that is habit, he wanted to capture Yudhishthir alive. Because once that is done, war is over. Kauravas would have won the war. That is why he wanted to capture Yudhishthir. 
the eldest of the Pandavas. For that, he planned Chakravyuha. Chakravyuha means wheel trap in that battlefield, purposefully. But wheel trap, only Arjun can break it. He knows how to break that. So Arjun, they made a plan. Arjun was challenged by Susharma, a warrior who fought on behalf of Kauravas. He challenged Arjun. When he challenged Susharma, Arjun went after him. Then Bhagavan Krishna warned him, Arjun, you should not go here. Your duty now is to stay back and protect your brother Yudhishthar. Brother Yudhishthar. Then Arjun said, no, it is the duty of a Kshatriya to go after someone who challenges him. Otherwise, it is disgraceful for a Kshatriya. I have to do it. Whatever. I am only charioteer. Okay, let's go. Arjun here talking about Kshatriya Dharma and duty to Krishna. That too after listening to Gita. I mean, look at that, that influence of Maya. You and I, our self-control are like that. You know, influence of Maya, they can any time we may give up. So Arjun went after Susharma. Gone. Arjun was taken away from the center of the battlefield. And here, wheel trap, Chakraviha, the only one who knew something about it was Abhimanyu. Again, he knew only to go, to break and go into the Chakraviyo, but he didn't know how to come out of it. He only knew half of it. He was hesitating, others were hesitating. Then Pandavas felt that, other four Pandavas, no, we will go behind him and support him. Let him go first, break the uh, Chakravyuha and let him go. We will go behind him and help. He went inside. Pandavas went behind him, but they were blocked by Jayatratha. Jayatratha represents body bound inclination, that attachment to this body. Attachment to this body is so powerful. So, uh, so that, is the, that is the one which is sometimes causing me to break the rules of Yama, Niyama, Pranayama. All this I can't do because of my attachment to the body. Body. So he, had, he blocked. So Yama, Niyama, Pranayama, Prachaha, they all, calmness, they gone, gone, defeated for one day, temporarily. So Abhivanyu became alone. That self-mastery has become alone. Still he could win oh, Karna individually, Duryodhan, that is desire, greed, Krupacharya, individual delusion, Dusyasan, anger. The self-mastery could win one after another, one after another characters. But eventually all these characters, Duryodhan, Dusyasan, Karna, all of them surrounded him and killed. Because self-mastery could win one by one. When, but all these characters like greed, illusion, desire, you know, repul attachment, repulsion, all these surrounded, self-mastery had to go. I mean, it all started self-control losing temporarily. Temporarily, you know, Arjun was pulled out when someone challenged. It may happen with us also. For example, I am going on a highway, driving. Suddenly, someone overtakes me. Suddenly, there is some impulse here. Oh, I too can do. Otherwise, he is challenging me and challenging my car. You no, know, that I should think at that point, exercise my self-control. No, maybe that's young blood going or maybe in an emergency he had to go quickly so if i leave him unknown person why should i feel challenged by him when i feel challenged i also drive fast getting into problems i mean this is this is this is the self control losing temporarily i am very happy with my beautiful 
colorful 65 inches TV, very beautiful, I, I always happy until my neighbor bought 75 inches TV. Then, and that's, that's challenging, you know, Susharma. Then my TV appears to be small, it's not so good until I purchase 85 inches. I mean, this is self control, losing self control rather. I mean, this can happen in our daily life. The world around us creates desires in us, but the world is not responsible for the consequence of the desires. Isn't it true? The comparisons, Susharma, all the time, all the time it's happening in the world. We, we live sometimes for others, when, you know, to, to please them or to prove that we are better than them, like that. So, let us exercise that self-control always, otherwise that self-mastery in us, Abhimanyu, may be killed. Once we lose Abhimanyu, that means we are not able to enjoy meditation long for longer and longer periods even after meditation. The benefits of meditation should spill over to our work even when you are not meditating. For that self mastery is required. Not to lose that. Not to lose that. Okay. I would like to stop here and we will continue with other slokas 789 in the next class. So just to in one minute to recall, today we first noted the great warriors who came to fight on behalf of Pandavas. Because Pandavas alone, five of them could not have won the war without the help of so many other supporters. Similarly, in my search for God, my little self-control, my practice of Yama, Niyama and Pranayama, calmness, are not adequate. These qualities are not adequate. I also need the support of many other qualities like devotion, spiritual memory, you know, dharana, dhyana, samadhi, ecstasy. All these things also are required. I have to cultivate them. The solace is that one need not be born with these divine qualities. This could be cultivated. In fact, as Guruji said, they are the spiritual effects meaning spiritual results of the practice of yoga by devotees, that means by you and by me. We can, we can cultivate them, which eventually help us to win this internal Kurukshetra and thereby attain self-realization and lead a smooth and joyous life. Jai Guru!